calling the next parties on case number three, Ian Hudson versus Anna Hudson. All parties, please come forward. This is cause number 093027327. Ask parties to introduce themselves for the record. My name is Anna Hudson. And respondent moving party. Yes. Okay, sir. Uh, Your Honor, I'm Ian Hudson, also moving. Moving party on the second motion for, I actually did not have an actual motion for me. Let me just make sure I have the hearing uh, regarding the ex party restraining order and the request for adequate cause. Receive the declaration in response and it was addressed regarding an order to show cause regarding contempt. I received the notice of appearance and response to the petition from Mr. Hudson and also a request for a <coughs> hearing on adequate cause, but it was set for January 3rd. Which, Your Honor, should have been moved to today, I confirmed. I didn't have a... If you have the motion for temporary orders, a motion for makeup residential time, and a motion to deny the petition for lack of adequate cause. So your uh, actual request was to deny the petition. You're opposing adequate cause, but you did not set a separate motion yourself. Is that correct? What I observed, Your Honor, is uh, the opposing party did not file an adequate cause motion. Well, hold on, let me just get straight what you have filed. Correct. Your request for a hearing on adequate cause was set for January 3rd? Correct. And okay, so that was never uh, addressed by the court. It wasn't confirmed? I did confirm, Your Honor. For with, uh, Rhonda. here yesterday? No. I confirmed actually to have it moved to today, which was with Rhonda at the front desk over there. Rhonda, the court confirmation number, I called and talked to Rhonda, mm -hmm. and she moved the, the hearing on the 3rd for adequate cause to today. Did you have proof of service for the hearing that you requested? Proof of service. Did you serve her with notice of the hearing that you were requesting? She went via ex parte and had everything moved no, no, to the 3rd. No. I'm just focusing on your, your hearing itself. Did you serve her with notice that you were requesting a hearing on adequate cause? Yes, Your Honor. You did. Do you have proof of service? I do in my docket. You didn't bring proof of service with you? Uh, to the court, I did not bring the proof have of service. Have you filed your own petition? Yes, Your Honor. For modification? Uh, the petition I'm filing today, Your Honor. Okay, so you have not filed a petition and you have not served her with notice of the petition? Uh, uh, the petition modify I have not filed. I was okay. planning on filing it today. Okay. So you're asking that the that there you're stating there is no adequate cause for a petition for modification, but you're filing your own. Correct. I'm stating there is an adequate cause on the mother's claims. Okay. But I'm filing my own, Your Honor. Okay. What, you expect to file that today? Yes, Your Honor. I'm ready. I just have to print it out and submit it to the clerk. Okay. Is there any reason why the parties wouldn't want to have these heard together at the same I, I, time? I have no reason to object. Do you want to set them over to the same time frame? Would or do you want to go forward today on yours and then come back again on his? I, 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 it's a very difficult situation to be put in because he hasn't filed, you haven't filed your petition. Your request for an adequate cause hearing was not properly before the court. You haven't served her with the petition, so it wouldn't be properly before the court today anyway. So I'm not going to hear your petition or your request for an adequate cause hearing. The only issue before the court would be the restraining orders and the request for the adequate cause hearing that was scheduled by uh, Ms. Hudson. Uh, we can go forward here today. I believe you filed a proper response to that request, so we could proceed on hers. Yeah, let's proceed. Proceed on hers. Do you feel comfortable with that, sir? You're ready to proceed? Your Honor, I was uh, trying to acquire counsel for the third, and then literally last minute the mother had moved it and filed new paperwork for the fourth, and so it created some issues with 
I'm trying uh, to respond and get. You filed a response to her request. Do you are you are you not prepared to go forward here today? Um, I, I can I can respond today, Your Honor. That's fine. I can. Well, you uh, can't respond uh, to anything that you haven't already filed. So either you want a continuance because you're seeking counsel, or you want to proceed today without counsel. I would like to have a continuance, Your Honor, with both adequate causes heard, if possible. Oh, the only way that's going to happen is if you have properly filed your petition and given her notice and filed your own request for a hearing and properly confirmed. It's not going to go forward if you haven't done that. I can't continue a hearing that hasn't happened, okay. continue a motion that hasn't been filed, or continue anything having to do with a petition that hasn't been filed. So until you get your own paperwork in place, it's not going to happen. Okay. So. If you want a continuance to respond, or we are requesting counsel to represent you, then you need to ask that today. Otherwise, we're going forward with what I have, and you will only be able to argue, uh, both of you will only be able to argue about what has been filed in the court today. If I continue the matter, the restraining order will remain in effect until the next hearing date, and then you can proceed uh, on that next day. How do you wish to proceed? I, I wish to proceed today. Today? Okay. okay. So we're ready to proceed. The only issue before the court will be the request by Ms. Hudson for a continuation of the restraining orders or show cause and the temporary order and adequate cause. Okay, you'll each have five minutes to address the court. I want you to first focus on the basis for adequate cause. You'll each have five minutes. Uh, please go ahead and address the court. Ms. Hudson, I'll let you know when you have about a minute remaining if you wish to save time for a reply. Um, today, I just wanted to let you know that I do have adequate cause to, to have a restraining order and asking for a modification in the parenting plan. Since we finalized our divorce in May of 2010, Ian Hudson's behavior has become more erratic as time has gone on. Um, the very first instance is when he just took my children from the daycare without notifying me and he brought the police saying that he was able to do it and he brought the parenting plan. But the pa parenting plan was very, um, uh, it was kind of vague and so they let him take the police with, without him Objection, giving me. Your Honor. There's been a ruling on this already where I was not found in contempt of the parenting plan July 15th, 2010. Okay, well I can take that into consideration. It's not a... Um, uh, she's stating it as part of her basis for adequate cause. You can address that in argument. Go ahead. Okay, after I decided to take him to court for that contempt, he decided to make up a story how me and my boyfriend were physically abusive and filed a report to CPS uh, on June 13, 2010. Objection. That's your objection? Personal knowledge. That's, that's not something that I did. Okay, your objection is that she doesn't have personal knowledge of the situation, or what? Of this report, the so-called report that she's stating that I created. There's, I, I know of no knowledge, I know of no instance in which I did that. Okay, well you can argue that in your hearing, or as well. Okay. Go ahead. All right, and this was the second time that he had called CPS, and it was to be unfounded. Um, when I did not back down from that one court case, he went to the Snoqualmie police and made up a story that my boyfriend and I were physically abusive, and he had the police interview the children on July 4th and July 19th, and he asked the police to make the report. Since then, um, Ian decided to move out of state in March 2011 without giving me any notice about it. He refused to give me an address of where he was going to be living and regularly would claim that he was homeless or working on a place to stay. He even told me once that he was living under the stars. He willfully abandoned the children without a thought of how they could deal with this sudden disappearance of their father. Early in April of 2011, after he disappeared from the state, he called the Federal Way Police Department to do a wellness check on the children. Um, then um, um, that check was done. Um, the, they went to the neighbor's house and confirmed that we were okay and I got a phone call from the police. Then on April 26, 2011, he called the police and said that he didn't know where we are and hadn't had contact with the children and um, asked them to make sure that we were still living in Washington State despite the fact that he was already living out of the state himself. When the police refused to do that, he claimed that he needed to do a wellness check because he hadn't talked to his children in a very long time when he had talked to them the day before. The police came over and interviewed me and my children. Then Mr. Hudson tells me on Thanksgiving of this year 
at nine around nine o'clock at night that he would be picking up the kids the next day for the full weekend. I asked him where the children were going to be staying with him, and he simply stated that he did not have to give me an address for at least two days after the children were already with him. He then comes on Friday, November 25th, and insists that I hand over the children. I refuse, and the police agree that I do not have to hand them over. The next day, he calls the police and claims my boyfriend and I are being physically abusive to the children, and the police come over to our house around 9, 9 a.m. in the morning, and they <coughs> separate the children from me and my boyfriend and from each other and question them and interview them. And since I was ordered to let Mr. Hudson, um, still we still had to use the parenting plan was in order, um, he took my daughter after four days of seeing her, of being absent from her life for eight months, he took her to the emergency room, claimed she had a burning urination and yellow discharge. And after making her get a vaginal exam, he claimed that she's being sexually abused by me and my boyfriend. And then he filed a suspected report of child abuse. He makes several false claims in the report. He claims that he's never made a false report, even though you ha there have the proof that he has through CPS. He claims my boyfriend is schizophrenic and abusive, which is untrue. He claims that I've been denying him visitation of the children, which is untrue. The worst part is, is that my daughter had to go through this type of exam for no real reason other than Mr. Hudson wants to seem like we abused the children. This has had a very negative impact on my daughter and it was very traumatic for her. Mr. Hudson should have called me immediately so I could have been there for my daughter if he believed this was truly an issue. She told me that sh it was very frightening for her and she told me that she was very scared and just wanted me, me to be there. I feel that just letting Objection. the... Hearsay. I actually, I have, the I have the reports right here. It's hearsay, I can't uh, consider okay. that. Go ahead. I feel that just letting the children go without supervised visits would be detrimental to the children. They have abandonment issues due to him just walking out of their lives. I feel that Mr. Hudson could be coaching them to, make, to have them make false reports. And I feel it would be harmful to my children to have visitation without the reunification process and supervised visits. They need to feel safe and feel unthreatened when they visit their father. Okay. That's all. We have about a minute remaining to reply. Sir, go ahead. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Um, initially, I, I want to object to declarations that were not signed under RCW 9A.72.085. Yeah, I read your request regarding that, and I wasn't clear which uh, documents you were referring to as the ones that I had received were signed under penalty of perjury, although it noted at the top of the document that they were under penalty of perjury, not at the bottom. Was there a particular one that you had a concern with? Your Honor, two emails that the mother submitted initially for the hearing on the 3rd were never signed, and then she resubmitted them for a hearing on the 4th with We're unidentifiable with signatures. signatures, correct? Okay. Um, no, no date, no under penalty of perjury clause. Okay, I see what you're saying. They were under penalty of perjury, however, they were not properly certified. One is signed, it does not have a date. I did have a date, but it wasn't signed uh, by the full name of the person. The second one was not signed under penalty of perjury and therefore cannot be considered. So go ahead. Then the mother responded late on December 29th to a contempt hearing, and maybe that'll be brought up during the contempt mm -hmm. portion of it. Um, there's also a missing last page for the uh, ex parte motion to restrain the mother from being around the children. I'm sorry? There, there's a missing last page for the boyfriend. There's a, a missing page three of three I never got, actually, in the certified mailing. So I have no idea what was said there on the that page. The declaration of the boyfriend. Correct, Your Honor. Uh, that would have been in the second packet. For the ex parte uh, restraining order mm -hmm. hearing uh, that was done on the 21st of December. This looks like it may have been the original that I have. Was this properly filed to the court? You want to have some time to review it. It's about five, six lines. You can review it and then respond if you wish to do so today. Sure, I'd like to do okay. that. Your Honor. So we'll just have you take a seat and I'll give you the full declaration. And we'll call another matter right before the court and then we can address it. Come back and hear response. Yes. You can just take a seat. <coughs> 